welcome to Wool and Spinning. My name is Sally Stitches. Rachel is away today. I hope that you are all doing well. Happy Halloween. And it is August 31st here at Wool and Spinning. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. I also have my dog Zero here. Jack Skellington has asked me to look after him today. Mm. And he happens to have some hot coffee in there for me. So I hope you are all doing very well. I hope that you are going to have lots of fun today. We have had a very challenging year. And today is a day to be completely silly. <laughs> so welcome, everyone. Yeah, Rachel's away today, Dorothy. It's actually Sally Stitches today. <laughs> I hope everybody's doing really super well. Thank you so much for your kind words. It is so much fun. I don't think we've ever had the stream actually on um, October 31st before. So how much fun is it to be able to do something like this? Today is, uh, let me find our show notes here. We have a little bit of um, housekeeping to start off with today. And I have some projects to share with you and I have a lot of spinning to share with you. I also have um, some community participation to share with you. So we've got lots and lots going on today and I just wanna welcome you all to this place and I hope that you have lots and lots of fun today. The live stream uh, and the people that are able to participate are able to do so because they are supporters of the show and are part of our Patreon. And that is how we keep the show on the air um, you know, week after week. And I just want to thank you guys so much for your continued pa continued patronage. To those new viewers of the show, welcome. Obviously, this is not a normal show. Sally Stitches is not normally here. And um, I just want to thank you for giving the show a shot. For those who are returning viewers, thank you so much for continuing to view. And please uh, take a moment to hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. So, without further ado, let's get into the show. words. Thank you, Jess, for saying it's a great costume. Um, we, uh, I, I have to admit, I did work on it all week to get it put together and I had to order a couple of different pieces to go with it because what came with the dress for the hair was um, a, a wool yarn wig and it's just, um, it's not wool, it's um, acrylic. Anyways, it was absolutely terrible. And so I had to sort of figure out what I was going to do. And then the glue for my eyelashes didn't work this morning. So I had to sort of abandon ship with the um, eyelashes because I had these big eyelashes. So maybe next year. And I have tights too. Let me see if I can show you. <laughs> these are Sally's boots. So I've got the whole thing on. Um, I'm planning on wearing it all day. I never ever dress up for Halloween. So I, this year, I just thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. So thank you so much. And um, yes, Jack Skellington, I do the same pumpkin face every year. So this one's mine and the kids are, are out front, but this is my pumpkin that I always do every year. It's Jack's face. So yeah, thank you so much, Mars. Thank you. It was early. Um, I have to admit, I didn't have a great sleep last night because I was worried about the makeup. I tried to do the full like cream makeup and everything, but I'm not a professional makeup artist. <laughs> I am a podcaster who talks about yarn. So really, um, anyway, so I had to wash it off and I started again and, uh, it was actually really fun. I, I had a really, really good time doing it. So thank you, you guys for your kind words. There is some bonus content that just went up on the, on Patreon today. So for those who are watching this later, I will link it down below. Um, it is the, how I spin, uh, the breed and color study. I did an extra a third vlog of the Charhole uh, breed study. And that was on my Alaska toque um, and everything is in the show notes for the links and that is available for everybody. So if you're curious about the How I Spin content and you are not uh, a uh, How I Spin 
uh, sub subscriber, um, this is an opportunity for you to see what I do and what uh, how I spin entails and what's included in how I spin. So thank you so much for checking that out. The link is down below. And like I said, it is for everyone, including Jack and Sally. Um, there's a lot going on in our community and we have a lot of alongs going on right now. So we've got our tin can knits along. We have our natural shades along, which is new. And this is for people who want to spin and want to uh, do a garment or a shawl or something, but in the natural shades of wool. I have a couple of ideas about what I want to do and I'm just kind of amassing all of my stash and all of my stuff that I want to want to do. Uh, we have our 51 Yarns Spin Along. Group A is coming to an end in December and Group B will be continuing to truck along into the new year and, and towards the end of 2021. So that will not be restarting with a Group C come in January. I think um, we need a little bit of a break with, with 51 Yarns, but if we can always come back to that next year. What else do we have going on? Um, thank you, Dana. Uh, We've got, uh, the books are available, links are down below for the How I Spin a Sock Study and also for Unbraided and our book club. We've got, we meet um, uh, once a month and more, for more information, you can connect with Becca on the Slack channel, hashtag books, books, books channel. And if you're having trouble finding all of the different channels and you're in the general channel, um, please uh, just ask one of us because we will be more than happy to help you. So, do you guys want to start with spinning? Um, <laughs> thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I was able to pop in for a bit and you look amazing. Thank you, Kelly. Oh, that's amazing, um, Rebecca. So, Martha is going to be a ghost and Diana is going as a monkey. So, Nora is going as a witch. I will post some photos later. And uh, James is going as a skeleton. So, yeah, it's really fun. Mm. We are not doing the trick or treating thing here um, this uh, this year, so um, it it it's such an odd year for everybody, and I just wanted to bring some cheer to everybody. So um, yeah, perhaps Sally can influence Rachel to dress up more often. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, I started getting ready at seven this morning, so it took me a full hour and a half to get ready. Um, and it would have gone a bit smoother if the eyelashes had worked, but say lovey for tonight, I'm going to draw them on. Um, there's a couple of tutorials of, of people who've done that and, and I'll do that for tonight. So let's start off with some finished objects. Actually, no, let's start off with spinning because it's Halloweeny and we can stick with our theme here. So this week I made these Rolex. I just was having so much fun and um, the Rolex I made on my drum, um, on my blending board and I have several, um, I will link everything here in the show, in the, in the live chat for you. So there's actually part two for those who missed it. There was part one was posted last night and part two was posted, um, a couple of hours later. And I was just making these on my blending board because honestly, I just was having a lot of fun. I felt really inspired. And I was going through my drawers upstairs and going through all of my Halloween stuff because I do have a couple of things that are kind of Halloween inspired. And one of them is my shawl back here um, that is actually um, a singles yarn that I, that I spun way back when I first came back to spinning. It was not really very well done. It was thick and thin, but the colors were so beautiful. And it was uh, Malabrigo in, um, uh, it's just, just their Merino roving. And I think it was um, the Poisson. Is that the colorway? I feel like that's not right. It's one of the other colorways. It's not that one. Anyways, I spun it as the singles and then I, I went to um, uh, do to, to do the shawl. So I ended up doing the bone yard. So this is actually, um, you know what? So I'll bring it closer for you guys as we're watching the spinning. Um, but I was just, I found it and I've been wearing it all week and it's just really, really fun. And we can put this on the bigger camera after we do the roll egg stuff. But um, it uh, really kind of got me fired up because I've been wearing my Halloween tube this week. And so I made these roll eggs because I still have all of these fibers in my stash. So 
The purple that's going through right now is Coriadale, and it was some Coriadale that I got from Shuttleworks years ago when they were shutting down. And then I put in some Firestar, uh, Angelina, um, I put in some Black Perindale, and the prep isn't very good, so that created lots and lots of texture in the yarn. And I put in, oh, um, mostly Corydale was in, was in the fiber and was in the prep. And then I didn't pre-attenuate the Rolex. I just kind of started spinning. And I started spinning on my Magicraft Suzy Pro because, to be honest with you, that was the wheel that was free. And I started spinning on the highest ratio that I normally just leave it on. That's kind of like my default. And um, I just spun and spun and spun. And... I just had an absolute blast. So I had eight of these ones that are the self-striping. And I had worked my way across the blending board um, from green to purple to black to orange. And how I spun the roll legs was I went from the green end to start. And then when I got to the orange end, I attached at the orange end um, so that I would end up with this really fun yarn. So we'll go to the bigger camera in, in, in a few minutes and, uh, and I'll show you. Um, but does anybody have any questions? I can see there are a few in the channel. So let me get caught up and I will, I will answer your questions. Well, Sally will answer for Rachel because Sally doesn't know anything about spinning. Can someone say approximately how many grams or ounces of fiber you can load on the blending board for making roll eggs? That's a great question, Charlotte. You know, I, um, I have found that often my, after I've pulled all the roll eggs off, they're about 40 to 60 grams, depending on how much I pack down the blending board. So if I pull off four or five and the more fiber I pack down, the more roll eggs I can pull off because as I'm pulling off, I try, well, not Sally, but Rachel, uh, Rachel tends to pull off, um, based on like, you know, really watching sort of how many fibers are coming onto the dowels so that you're not, um, ending up with these massive roll eggs at the beginning and then these teeny tiny ones at the end. You want to try to have them as even as possible. So if you do three turns, for example, then you want to pull that off and um, fix those fibers. And actually on the first vlog, the one that I had published first yesterday afternoon, um, I show and I talk a little bit about that specific um, question because I really struggled with that at first and I really struggled with getting stuff off evenly and um, it worked out really well um, just going back and uh, practicing that. So yeah, I hope that I hope that helps. I love Rolex I watched last night and now a blending board is on my Christmas list. Awesome, Maggie. I hope that you get one. I really like the Ashford one because at the back you um, screw on the, um, um, the, the leg, it's not really a leg, but you screw on the, the paddle at the back of the blending board. And then you can put it at different angles and you can put it at different heights. So depending on how you work and what you need, cause you can really strain your thumbs if you're not careful as you're pushing the fiber off and as you're drafting off. So you can do it down in your lap and have it between your thighs, or you can do it up on a table. Um, so I really like the adjustability of that one. And it's affordable. Uh, let me just keep catching up with the chat. You guys are so chatty this morning. Um, I think that's wonderful. Thank you for, for participating. Um, let me see. Oh, hi, Heidi. Oh, don't, it, isn't that crazy when the kids play with the iPad? <laughs> and then it's like, how do I undo stuff? Welcome, Heidi, though. Um, you mentioned the video making roll eggs from the drum carter. Absolutely, Tracy. So um, this is actually how Katrina does her, her roll eggs. So when she's doing her roll eggs off the drum carter, um, the, the nice thing about doing them off the drum carter is you can make sure they're very even. So if you load the fiber onto the big drum really evenly, um, as you're taking off the roll eggs, you can do it really evenly. So you can like turn your dowels, let's say three or four times, and then pull off. And you know that if you do that every single time all the way around the drum that your your roll legs are going to be quite evenly um are going to be quite even in terms of your the weight 
So um, when you do that, um, it makes them really even. You can also make them quite a bit bigger. So if you want um, to really load your drum of your drum carter, you can make quite large Rolex and then you can sit and spin forever. And Loreline actually um, loaded hers onto um, uh, a distaff. So she pre-attenuated them and then she loaded them onto a distaff, which was great. So the... Um, so, so it just makes, keeps the, the, the spinning going. It means that you are, you know, sort of, um, not stopping and starting and that pre attenuating, um, really makes a big difference if you want a really fine singles as you spin. So when you're on the drum carter, it's basically the same thing. So you use your doffer to pull up that one end and then you just start taking off just like you would a bat, except that you're using your dowels and you're rolling pulling off and then you, um, you know, prep them, take them off the dowel and then you do the next one and you just work your way around the drum. And from the drum carter, if you're, if you're at the end of your drum carter here, and let me just turn toward the camera so I'm like straight on. So if you're at the end of your drum carter, the liquor in rush is closer to you guys at the screen. And then the, the, the drum is near me. Um, you want to work, um, backwards. So you want to work, um, towards the front of the drum carter. If you go the other way, you're actually going to rough up the surface of your um, carded um, bat. It's because you're going the opposite way. Does that make sense? So you want to work towards the back of the carter, just like you would when you take off a bat. No, when you take off a bat, you're going forward. I'm going to completely confuse you guys. I'll do a video on it when I get a chance. Mmm. Carol, you have to, you have to pull it out. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, definitely give it a go. It's not intimidating at all. In some ways, I actually find a drum carter more intimidating than a, uh, than a blending board because the blending board, you're just painting, you know, and then once you've got all your stuff painted on, you just use the brush that came with it and you lift up the bottom, lift up the ends, give yourself about an inch into the carding cloth to, that's lifted up. And, um, you know, give you like really flick it, like be quite aggressive. And, um, sorry, zero wants to have a minute in the camera too. He's feeling a bit left out. So, um, give yourself a chance to really get work at the ends there and then, you know, um, roll, use your dowel, make sure that it's, um, displaced. So make sure that your dowel is, um, not lined up. Um, like if, the, if this is the dowel, make sure that it's offset. So that when you uh, go to take the roll leg off, you actually can push them through. If they're like this, they're really, really difficult if they're, if they're even. And I talk about that in, in part one. So if you're, if you're confused, definitely go and have a look. Brother Drum Carter Blending Board does the same thing. Yes, you're right, Megan, they do. And they've got great products too. I have one of their um, Drum Carters and I love it. Um, really great. Yeah, I'll try and do a video of the um, of taking off on the on the uh, blending board, or sorry, on the drum carter. I would really like to do a couple of videos about some different ways to use your drum carter. So, uh, taking off roll legs, taking off um, hand pulled roving, and uh, I think it would just be really nice to kind of go through those techniques again because we haven't done it for a while. So, yeah, self. Oh, that's awesome, Dana. Self made but did not enjoy the teacher argument. Oh, that's too bad, stored it away. Yeah, give it another go, Dana, you never know. So do you guys wanna see the finished yarn for this from these Rolex? So this is me spinning it. So the actual spinning technique is pretty pretty straightforward. Um, I put the uh, uptake up, not super high, but you know, it was pretty firm. And I it looks like I'm smoothing, but my fingers are running back along the singles very lightly. So the, the, as I go back to pinch and pull back again, my fingers are, are really not smoothing a lot. And you'll see in the finished yarn that it's very, very um, woolen looking. Uh, it's very fuzzy looking, and that's achieved by not doing that really firm smoothing. So... Yeah. Okay, great. I love that, you guys. I will work on that. We'll see if we can figure out some some ways to uh, get some more some more drum carter and blending board videos. Diana Twist is a wonderful resource for blending boards. She's really got 
um, a knack for using them and for spinning with them. She does a lot of, of course, Diana, for those who don't know, she's a, a just an amazing spindle spinner. And um, she's done a lot of work with blending boards and she does a couple of videos um, uh, on uh, School of Sweet Georgia for teaching spindling and she's got lots on her Instagram feed about um, spinning from roll legs so definitely check her out if you're interested in learning a little bit more about about spinning from roll legs I don't do a lot of spinning from roll legs or well Sally doesn't do any but Rachel doesn't spin from roll legs a lot and a lot of the reason is just because I end up with so many so much other uh, prep and other fibers to spin that I just kind of run out of time more than anything well Sally doesn't Rachel does so I'm sure you guys can understand that. These are the blended roll legs now that I've started playing. And um, if you notice the bobbin, um, have a look at the bobbin as it's filling. The other bobbin on, from, from earlier in this video, the, the colors were coming through very clean and they were um, very bright. And if you look at the bobbin now as it's filling, um, as I spin, notice how muddy it is and how gray and, and how brown. Um, it's got a real gray undertone. and um, um, just just sort of note that difference because when you're making your uh, row legs on the blending board really really pay attention to how you're laying on the color what colors you're you're putting on and whether or not you want those colors to blend and create sort of a homogeneous slightly gray uh, yarn if you're putting in a whole bunch of secondary colors or if you want cleaner color and you want it to look um, more like a self-striping or you want those colors to remain a bit cleaner you don't want to start layering a bunch of color on top of each other so just keep that in mind so note the bobbin difference the one bobbin was very clean very bright and this bobbin is very gray very blended it looks very different yeah oh that's right Jackie you got the carding cloth and you made that blending board that's right yes Jackie Oh my goodness, how time flies. Hey, I remember packaging that up for you and sending that to you. That's wonderful. Awesome, Diane. She made hers from a piece of carding cloth and a cutting board that she got at Goodwill for three bucks. That's wonderful. Awesome, you guys. I love how resourceful you, you all are. That's fantastic. So does anybody have any questions about the actual spinning before we go to talking about the actual yarn? Sally would... Sally doesn't want to rush you guys. You can watch this later. This is part two. So this video is in part two and there's a voiceover. So if you have more questions, don't hesitate about asking. So would you say, say use more bright colors to avoid muddying? So Carol, great question. Let's talk about that when I go to the yarn. How did you ply? I just two plied. So what I ended up doing was I took the eight row legs from each colorway. So for the self striping, I took four spun them to one bobbin, four spun them to the other bobbin, and I plied them. And the reason was because I already had spun these fibers in this combination from a bat and chain plied and made a gradient yarn. So I wanted to see what it would look like if I two plied it. And then the blended yarn, I did four and four and plied it. And of course, with the blended yarn with this one that I'm spinning right now, um, it doesn't matter how you ply um, it's more about the structure because the color, it's going to come out blended and heathered and um, woolly and you know, fuzzy looking anyways, no matter what you do. So why don't we go to the other, the other shot and I will uh, talk about the finished yarn. So which camera is it that I need to go to? Here we go. You guys can see my finished angel in the background. I don't know if Kelly's still here. I know she was going to pop in for a little bit. So I'm just going to move. Sally has to has to shift over because she can't reach. You know, she is a doll after all. She's sewn together. Does anybody know where all of this is from? S -S Sally and Jack Skellington and Zero. Because some of you, I'm assuming that you guys know where all of this is from. But some of you might not know and might not know my costume. And while you guys are telling each other where it's from, because some of you may not, like I said, may not know, I will fix this up for you guys. I'm really excited to share this project with you guys in just a minute. This is a really exciting project. Okay, so these are the finished yarns. 
So this is the blended yarn and this is the self-striping. So how much fun are those? Oh, hi Kelly. Oh good, you're still here because I want to talk I want to talk about this. I will I will share this with you guys in just a minute. Um, I, it's still wet, so um, I will I will share this with you once it's dry next week, but I wanted to talk about it this week. So we'll talk about that in a sec, Kelly. So how crazy different are those? So to answer Carol's question, she had an awesome question. So would you use more bright colors to avoid muddying? The brightness of color doesn't really have a lot to do with whether or not it's going to muddy or not. The biggest indicator of whether or not you're going to have muddying is the colors themselves. So if you look at this yarn here, which was spun um, with the self-striping Rolex, and then I two-plied, like I said, and you've got places in the yarn, and this is still damp because our house is so cold, um, the... Um, the finished yarn, there are places where the orange met up and the purple met up and where the green met up and the and the black. But there's obviously lots and lots of places where it ended up barber pulling. Um, but it's not muddy like this one is. And the reason for that is even, so let's go back a step. We've got all of the secondary colors in this yarn. We've got purple, orange, and green. So when you take a step back and you think about what it takes to make those colors, Orange is made with yellow and red. Purple is made with red and, and um, blue. And then green is made with blue and yellow. So you have all of the primary colors in that yarn. And these are all the secondary colors that we're putting them together. So if you look at the color wheel, when you combine all of those colors, do you guys know what color is made? What color do you make when you combine all of the primary and secondary colors together? What's this? There's magic in the air. Absolutely, Leanne, you got it, nailed it. <laughs> if no, if you guys haven't seen The Nightmare Before Christmas and you haven't, you aren't aware of Tim Burton's work, this is it. Um, his other film, The Corpse Bride, has been playing all month on TV too. Here, you know what? It's funny, Alberto, because we have to pay here to get The Corpse Bride, which is really too bad because I was hoping to share it with the kids this year. And um, we ended up not just running out of time. So I'm hoping that we can share that with them maybe, maybe tomorrow. Um, you make brown. That's exactly it, Becca. So when you combine all those colors, you make brown. And the thing is, is that while um, many of us love browns and we love grays and we wear a lot of grays, um, in our yarns, it's not necessarily what we want to create. So it's not so much brightness as it is the actual colors themselves. So if you have a lot of really dark muted colors, but you've got greens and oranges and purples and you combine them together, they're going to make dark gray, dark brown. If you have really bright oranges, really bright uh, purples and really bright greens, you're going to make just brighter brown and brighter gray and you can see how muted this is like look at how muted this skein is and look at how bright these colors are this orange is neon um and you saw in the intro credits that that toque that i had done with this yarn uh spun from the gradient bat and how bright it was and then you go and you combine all those colors into this yarn and it's funny because this yarn this blended yarn is actually more textured and more uneven um, and looks more like an art yarn than the other one. And I think part of that is the combination of all those fibers being spun together. And um, you kind of lose the sparkle, you lose the, the because um, I put a lot of Fire Angelina and Firestar and Sorry Silk threads that I cut up and I put in. It's all in the first video. And you've lost all of it in here. It's you really can't see it unless you really go in close and really have a good look. Whereas this one, there's some places in the green where it's really, really sparkly. Of course, the camera's not going to pick it up very well, but it's sparkly and it's a little bit smoother. It's not quite as as sort of adulterated, if you will, whereas this one's very gray, very muted, very muddy. And then on top of that, we added black in there. So this one's even darker because it's got that dark tone of the black and what i love about studies like this is so that we can actually see in real time how this stuff works up it's one thing for us to sit here and talk about it it's another thing for us to sit here and actually for you to see it so really super fun 
I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, Eve. I don't have a lot of yardage. Um, I actually was thinking Maggie had made that really great cowl that was the infinity cowl with the chevrons. And I was thinking about two by two rowing it. So two rows would be the blended, two rows would be the self-striping that sort of the barber pulled. I don't consider the the roll legs were self-striping. But the, the finished yarn, I would call this a traditional two-ply. This is not a self-striping yarn. I didn't chain-ply it for one. And I didn't break the singles to make sure that they all met up, that the colors met, met up with each other. I just plied it as a traditional two-ply. I would even... Um, yeah, so I would call this a traditional two ply, not not a self striping yarn. The roll legs were self striping roll legs and had the potential to be spun into a self striping yarn. My um, the Sally's hair keeps getting caught in my eyelashes. Um, the muted skein looks very cobwebby. Yeah, it's true, Greta. Thank you. It does. Um, when I was a kid, we just watched it at both. The Nightmare, yeah, my daughter loves that movie, and this year it was all about Nightmare Before Christmas. That's wonderful. Thanks, Crystal. Tell your daughter that I, I absolutely love that movie, and I'm glad she enjoys it, too. Oh, Jackie, you watched it for the first time this year. That's awesome. I think a lot of people were able to see it this year because of Disney+. Plus. So for people who hadn't seen it before, they were able to watch it for the first time. So, ooh, matching fingerless mitts. That's a good idea. Um, I was thinking the cowl to go with the toque, to be honest with you, because the toque is really hard to match with anything else. Um, it's so bright and it's so crazy and I don't have any black shawls. So I was thinking about kind of the idea of matching them. I also thought that I could do another boneyard. Um, I had thought that um, this would actually work as a pattern. This is a Stephen West pattern. Um, it, I don't know if it's free. I feel like it might be. If somebody wants to link it in the live chat, that would be wonderful. Um, but you do stock in that, and then you've got these garter ridges in here. And it's just a triangular shawl. And um, because mine is quite long, um, you can see how long the wingspan is here. It actually curls quite badly. But I, I don't mind because when I wear it, I actually loop it underneath. Sally's such a good sport for modeling this stuff when she's all when she's all dressed up in her Sunday best. Um, oh, I would also like to say this is the first time I've ever worn red lipstick. Um, I, I, I tie it underneath like that and then I, I lay it over like that. So that's actually how I wear this. And I was sort of thinking that these yarns would work really well for a pattern like this since I already have it in my Ravelry library. I was going to ask you guys, for those who aren't using Ravelry anymore um, or are choosing not to use it at this time, uh, what, um, what, how do you keep your patterns organized when you buy a pattern, like off Etsy or if you do a free download somewhere and get a PDF? How do you keep your, your patterns organized? Do you use Google Drive? Is there something on Apple that you use? Um, do you just keep them in a folder on your, on your computer or your laptop? Um, I was curious, particularly for those who are mobile users, like have iPads, and that kind of stuff. I'm just curious. Yes, it is interesting to see them side by side, Maggie, because they are so different. And you sort of look at the roll legs and you're like, well, the roll legs are really quite different. And if you didn't know and you weren't an experienced spinner, you maybe would even think that it was different fiber and different colors in the actual roll legs themselves. So thank you for letting me wax poetic about this yarn. It was really fun to make. It's actually still damp. Um, so it really hasn't uh, um, really bloomed like it will because the Coriadale will bloom and there's a little bit of Merino in here as well. So thank you for, for listening and, and I really appreciate you guys um, being in, in, enthusiastic about um, about sort of Halloween inspired yarn. I know not everybody um, celebrates Halloween or, well not celebrates, I don't celebrate it either, but I know um, not everybody participates in Halloween. Um, so I appreciate you, uh, um, you know, it's sort of putting up with me um, when I when I do stuff like this. It's just really fun. Um, I want to talk really quickly about my um, love note. So I am going to finish it. I'm going to just move back a little bit from the camera for just a moment. I haven't had a chance to 
lengthen the um, the hem here, but I do have enough yarn to lengthen the hem a little bit and I am gonna go ahead and finish it because I tried it on again the other day and what I love about this sweater so, so much is this scooped back hem. And um, I have a couple of shirts and dresses and um, outfits and whatnot that I think would just be really quite lovely with it. So I was hoping to finish it for today, but I was um, sidetracked as you can see. Um, and uh, I'll hopefully have that done for next week. I have to say, after everything that 2020 has sort of done for everybody, and uh, you know, just all of the uh, difficult, the difficult nature of 2020, um, it's really fun to just come here and be fun with you guys and just have some fun. So let's talk about my perfect blend. This is a shawl by Cas Casapinka. And these are all of my yarns that I spun over the last, um, this side, uh, over the last, I guess since June. I think I started working on them in June. Well, not, not, not Sally, uh, but Rachel started working on them in June. And so I've got... Um, Tuss a brick in here, and I've got some um, yak and Tussa silk, and I've got um, some orgasm, which is a 50 50 merino Tussa. Uh, my Tassar is in here, which is right here. My red Erie. Uh, this was um, silk, this was Tussa silk brick. Um, this one was, I think this was just Tussa. Oh, this was white Erie. This one is white eerie. Look at the difference in the two colors between those two. These are all from Sanjo Silk here in Vancouver. And um, this was um, the light Tassar. So this is um, the same, this is uh, peduncle. And this one is the lighter um, Tassar Silk. And I just had a little, a little bit of that. And what I have done, so this is a brilliant pattern. This was a make along that Casa Pinka had, had, uh, had done in her community, I think. I didn't really look too deeply into like what had happened and what the, what the make along was. Um, I just love the, the shawl. So it's a crescent shawl. Is this crescent? No, this is a triangular shawl. Looks like this. And she gives you this schematic so that you can put in all of your different colors that you're going to use as you work your way through and she gives you different recommendations and it's meant to be done with like mini mini skeins or you know scraps or you can do a uh, you know one where there's only four colors and she tells you which which ones to put them in so this is numbered 1 to 12 and you I've been writing in what I have put so and then she gives you um, and this shawl, by the way, is called, I think I said, but it's called a perfect, the perfect blend. And then she gives you all of the different clues. So I think there's six or eight downloads in total. And one of them, like the beginning, the first clue, if you will. So what you would have gotten if you were participating in the mystery, um, in the mystery knit along. If you guys ever come across M-K-A-L, capitals, all capitals, M-K-A-L, that means mystery make mystery knit along. Um, and it's a thing that's very popular in the knitting world. So for those who are not knitters and you come across that, um, that's what that's all about. So um, anyways, so you go, sorry, I've got hair in my in my eyes. Um, so so for the first PDF download, um, I you end up doing, so for clue one, for example, you end up working your way through uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that seems a bit long. Six. Oh, maybe that's right. Yeah. So you work your way through a whole bunch of the different colors. And the rows, the, the each color for the beginning part is like six rows, ten rows. And then it starts to grow um, as you work your way through the shawl. And then you go to your next clue and you work your way through that one. And, of course, each one gets bigger and bigger and bigger because you're working your way and getting, the shawl's getting bigger and bigger. And this is what I've done so far. So you can see how there are a ton of ends. That's the only complaint I have about this shawl um, is 
the ends. Let me see if I can get this into the camera view so that you guys can see. Oh, let's just move this out of the way. I surrender. Fine. I'll move my stuff if that's what you want. So this is the beginning of the shawl and I'll move, I'll move the, the camera view so that you guys can actually see. I'll, I'll scoop me up into the corner. So how fun is that? So it's going to be all natural shades of silk. Um, so I started off with the Tassar peduncle that I had that was the lighter color because I only have a little bit of that. So I wasn't sure how far it was going to go. And then this is Tassa silk brick and then the red Erie that's white and then more of the Tassar, this light Tassar because I um, had a little bit more than I thought that I did. And I'm just going to keep on working my way through it. The problem is, well, not the problem, but something that's sort of a bit challenging about this this knit is that I have to kind of sit here and be focused on it. I can't really do anything else um, because I have to sort of uh, figure out which color is coming next and then I have to sort of um, write it down and then and then work my way through that color. So it's a little bit more intense but I am willing to do it because look at that. And so the whole shawl will be all these natural colors of silk. So super, super fun. I'm not going to wait till the end to weave in all the ends. She actually tells you at the end of every single clue to take the time and weave in your ends because you will regret it if you don't. So I am taking her advice and I will weave in my ends as I go. The problem with silk is it's really hard to weave in ends. Um, so I may do invisible little knots um, to connect the two colors um, just so that it's really super secure and then I'll weave them in so that they're hidden. Bye, Erica. It was so good to um, to see you and to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for answering her question, Sherry. So um, uh, Dorothy was wondering, what is a silk brick? Um, so a brick is a type of silk preparation in a huge compressed brick. Um, it is sliver or top folded and compressed into a brick. And actually, I, I might be wrong about this. Um, and my friend Kim McKenna might be able to chime in in the comments when she has a chance to uh, catch up on the show, I think that brick is becoming harder and harder to get. Like, I don't think that it's sort of out there on the market as much as it was. I have seen it in the past at Sanjo Silk, but I'm not sure that it's really um, as common as it once was. But silk prep in general is getting so, like, it's just coming, like, it's, it's just so amazing. It's coming so far and it's becoming more and more popular to spin and spinners are learning more about it and finding out about it. So, um, it's definitely something that uh, is becoming more common and I but but I haven't seen a lot of brick around it was really really fun to spin what do you mean Greta by you can purl them in too what do you mean I would love to know more about what you mean mm. thank you Meg if you could share that video she says I've got a video on knitting in your ends as you go it saved me hours in my life yeah, if you could share that, that would be wonderful, Meg. Thank you so much. So that is that project. And I'm just going to slowly work on that in the background. And that is coming up for some content um, in the new year when we talk about spinning silk and spinning luxury fibers. So this is my Andel. Andel. Um, this is a test knit, actually. And I don't do test knits very often. Um, but this was a test knit for Kelly of Kelly G Knits. And I have actually woven in my ends. I just haven't trimmed them yet. So let me hide them. I, I usually wait with color work to trim ends until after I have actually, until the garment has actually dried. Um, you can see the color work pattern. So I used um, my on the round BFL that I've been kind of saving for years and wanting to use in a project and having lots of misgivings about which project I should use it in and put it, picking it up and putting it down and all the things. And so I used a little bit for this and then I used white Knit Picks palette for the background. So this was really, really fun to test knit for Kelly. It is a beautiful pattern when it's uh, fully written and, and out there. I really recommend you guys checking it out. Love the crown on this. Let me see if I can open it up and I will show you guys on the big camera. That is the crown there. Isn't that beautiful? And obviously I can't model it on today and it's wet anyhow, but I will share this with you in the future. So beautiful, beautiful pattern. 
and the movement of color in this ended up working out really well. When I was in this section here where my pinkies are, um, I was actually really worried because I was like, oh, it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter and it's really blending in with the create with the the white of the knit pack knit picks and I was like oh it's not going to be enough contrast and maybe I should rip back and I should try to you know um uh cut that part of the skein out and redo it so that it's a little bit more contrasty but it ended up working out really well and it just I think if I had done that it would have interrupted the transition of color and I think it would have actually ruined the look of the yarn because you would have ended up with sort of this um the the cutting somewhere in here and then this uh change in the gradation of the yarn so i think in the end it actually worked out really well that i didn't cut it and that i just let it go and hoped that the color would transition back a bit darker again which it did so really happy with this beautiful pattern kelly well done and i'm excited to wear this once it's dry um because it is still it's damp dry right now it's not soaking wet but it's damp dry and then the other project that I have done, and it's almost dry, oh my goodness, it will not dry, is my Karma. So this is my Karma spin that I showed you guys last week. I had just taken it off the wheel, and I spun this um, continuous backwards, very minimal smoothing. This is West Coast Coloring Carding Karma, which is for 50-50 Merino and Yak. And uh, I'm really happy with how it's come out and how it washed up, it's really bloomed and filled in. That merino and that yak just took the water and you could just see it in, in, in the water as it was having its bath, like just, just bloom. So I'm looking, again, this is still damp, but uh, let's see if I can, I can lay this out for you guys. And uh, now I just need to do the rest of the spinning for this project because I've got quite a lot of spinning. I'll have 300 grams in total. And the sweater that I'm hoping to do is a color work sweater, actually, which is unusual for me. I'll link it in the live chat right now. It's a Marie Wallen. The other sweater I was looking at was the Spark by Andrea Mowry. Um, if I have gauge, it might that I might do that as well. But the like instead of but Nigella is the one that I'm looking at for this yarn and um, holding it with some of that natural colored CVM and doing that as a two ply instead of continuing on with the three ply. So um, I'm going to do some swatching once this is dry and uh, figure it out. Yeah. I'm just looking at the chat, just catching up. Great combination of color progression and pattern for the Engel. Yeah, love the movement of color. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, love the ginkgo leaves. Me being in the north, I want to turn them. Oh, very cool, Rebecca. So I don't know how you say it. An Ulu Inuit Women's Knife. Um, yeah, they're having a whole discussion about about the um, about some of the um, Inuit um words and language um living in the in the north yeah yeah the deep colors of the uh, karma is just beautiful it really really came out nicely i'm really really happy with with it and um, i'm looking forward to spinning more of it because i think it'll i think it's just going to be really amazing yarn to be honest with you so that's what i have been working on this week so let's go to community participation i need to change my cameras around a little bit just so i know what i'm talking about and you guys don't get completely confused. Um, for October, tell us about your spinning plans for the rest of the year. It's been really fun for me to go back and read through what you guys have been posting and what you're looking forward to exploring and learning and making. So you can comment in the episode thread on Ravelry, which I will link in the live chat for you guys. Or if you are not a Ravelry user, you can just comment below here on YouTube and I will go through the all the different comments from all the October shows and um, make sure that, that your comment is 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 included in the random draw okay so martha has been working away on her strange brew and it's funny because i was looking at the strange brew this morning because i was sort of wondering i um, it's been so much fun looking and seeing what other people have been making with that pattern and i was looking at it and kind of getting some of the the rundown about what what is involved with that pattern that i might i might look into um 
doing a little bit, doing a sweater with that, with that pattern. So this is for our tin can knits along that we've been doing in the community. And we chose this because everybody was working on tin can knits patterns. I was doing my love note. There were others doing, doing uh, love notes as well. There were people doing these, these strange brews and uh, it was just a really fun opportunity for us to come together and, and do something together as a, as a group. So um, this is Martha at Martha Mew. Uh, checking in with an update for you all. I've been working a little bit on my strange brew, as you can see. I did rip out what I had done before because I felt that the patterning just wasn't coming through as much as I liked. I did keep going thinking, oh, maybe it'll come through better the more I do. I've been there, Martha. It never works. Uh, but it didn't seem to be happening. And I thought I had best stop before I did too much more and couldn't face re-knitting. Anyway, I changed it to a much more simple design of just chevrons. You may also notice there is another color. So I actually took all but one of the blue skeins that I had already caked up and over dyed them into the purple, which is beautiful. That purple color is absolutely gorgeous. And I have now decided this is my main color. So the plan is to finish the chevrons using the purple and do the body and sleeves in the purple too. And I love it. Gorgeous, Martha. Really, really well done. Absolutely beautiful job. So thank you so much for sharing. This is Tessa's finished love note. I love this color and I love what it looks like on her. 20 days start to finish. I could get used to these big needles, uh, these big needle sweaters. I made two adjustments. Uh, to make something I will wear more often. No short rows because I prefer the fit without them. And I increase the overall body length. Best of all, today was chilly enough to wear it. It looks amazing, Tessa. Really, really beautifully done. I love the color. I know I already said that, but I just, that color, I just love it. <laughs> that grello. Oh, there's just nothing like it. Really well done. Beautiful, says Jackie. I'm working on three things, experimenting with different soap washing fibers, spending more time spinning and learning to weave. I thought about joining the group B to focus on my spinning, says Heidi. That's a lot going on, Heidi. I hope that you get some of it done before the end of the year. Uh, Tessa loves the way that her sweater worked out. It, it, Yeah, it's just awesome, Tessa. Well done. Um, so this is some, let's do Zero to Hero next. This was from Sue. And I think Sue might be in the chat. I love this vest. Love it so much. So this is from Sue at Mighty Sue. I started spinning for this in early February. Zero to Hero. Four different colors. Spindle spun and plied on her mini. Um, and multiple attempts to get this going as the yarn is so thick. But it's done and I love it. It will get blocked in due course. But right now I'm wearing it. Sue, I love this. It is gorgeous. I love the back. And what you did with the collar, I think it looks amazing. And it looks amazing on you. I love the colors. And I really like the asymmetry of the front. When I saw it on come through the thread on Ravelry where you had shared it, that was the first thing that I thought was how flattering that asymmetry was at the front of the vest. Really beautiful. So pretty, Sue. Really like that. Um, yeah, really, really like that, Sue. That is amazing. You did such a great job, Sue. You guys are so supportive. You're so kind to one another. It's so, so wonderful. This is from Mars. If you do not watch her podcast, Hey Brownberry, you need to. Please subscribe. <laughs> um, Mars is one of our active community members. She's just wonderful. She's going to be on Wool and Spinning Radio in November. So look out for that because there will be a video alongside that. Catherine of Small Bird Workshop was on Wool and Spinning Radio this past month, along with Leah Churchley was um, earlier in the month. Both of them are accompanied by video. So if you guys want to, instead of listening to Wool and Spinning Radio, if you would like to watch Wool and Spinning Radio, um, just go to the links in Patreon and click um, click the link because it is there. So this is from Mars, another combination project using hand spun and commercial but naturally dyed yarn. Uh, the burgundy is a two ply fingering weight spun from John Arbin's Yarnadelic Coriadale top. The pattern is her own R and R socks with a modification to use the heel from her good her walk good socks. So two patterns there that are Mars's own. And I have linked them in the show notes and I hope you check them out. And this color, this color, amazing. And it looks great on, I, this is a color that would look amazing on Mars. I think a lot of people can wear this color, but 
Mars looks great in those colors. If you haven't seen her uh, hand spun sweater that she did, when, when you see the Woolen Spinning Radio episode, there's a photo of it that I've included, and I hope you guys uh, check it out. <laughs> Mars is so cute. She's blushing. I love it. I love making people blush. And this is Meg. This is so much fun. This is part of our 51 Yarns Group A. So Group A is nearing the end of the book. And we worked through the 51 Yarns. 51 Yarns to Spin Before You Cast Off. It's by J.C. Box Faulkner. It's a great book. It's a great exercise in sort of working your way through. And um, yarns that you maybe won't spin in your spinning career unless you intentionally go and spin them. And so one of the yarns that we've been working on is a new natural yarn. So the uh, prompt and the uh, challenge that was sent out from that particular yarn in the book was to go out into the natural world and find some fiber to spin. Something that maybe has never been spun before, something that you could do by hand or on a simple tool, a simple spindle, or maybe you could somehow get it onto your wheel. I spun dandelion clock fiber. It was very interesting. And Meg went out uh, with her boys on a hike. So she found some fall foliage and she used her hands to spin this. For structure, she wrote question mark, question mark, which I love because there really isn't a structure to uh, yarns like this. I was thinking you could maybe say that it was coarse spun, but not really. And she said in her reflection, she decided on a hike with her boys that while they were playing at the lake, she would spin the fall. The hike was gorgeous. The leaves and plants were red, yellow, gold, and orange. She used the sturdy stem of Anaphalus as her core to core spin, her quotes, uh, some fall leaves. And honestly, Meg, it turned out really beautifully. I love this photo. I think it's just gorgeous. And uh, Meg is in Colorado. So those, those gorgeous, uh, that sort of, you know, to me just screams fall, screams that part. This is very, you could, you could plunk yourself down in British Columbia or Washington or Oregon. Like this is just so what it looks like in this part of the world. So much fun. So thank you, you guys for sharing and thank you so much for continuing to participate in and participate in this community. Yeah, I agree, uh, Maggie. She says stunning socks about Mars, Mars's socks. It's actually, I would like to knit them. I just, I'm I'm a bit socked out still from our How I Spin sock content. I, do, I think I knit and spun like 14 or 15 pairs of socks in under two years. And it's not really that much. Some people, that's all they do is make socks. But I got a little bit burned out. So really, really fun. Does anybody have any questions before we finish up? Oh, the sun is starting to come in, so we're brightening up. It's going to be a gorgeous day here today. There is no rain in the forecast, and we have daylight savings is coming to an end tonight. So starting tomorrow, the show will be uh, published using Pacific Standard Time. So um, I think Britain and parts of and, and Europe, I think, uh, their daylight savings ended last weekend. Ours ends this weekend. So starting tomorrow, uh, the show will be daylight, uh, will be Pacific Standard Time going forward. Just so you guys know, because I know that gets really confusing. So how I spin for November and December is going to be all about spinning blends. And there will be content for both months talking about making blends, the yarns that I've spun recently that were blends, and exploring um, sort of, you know, how I came up with some of these ideas, what the inspiration was, and then um, what I would do if I could go back and do it all over again, knowing what I know now. It's a feature that we sort of included. It was a, a recommendation from Pat, actually, is, who's part of our community. And she had uh, suggested starting to do that. So back in earlier in the fall, we started including a segment in all of our teaching content around if I knew what I knew now, what would I do differently or what would I like to continue to explore, which is a really cool segment. So that is coming up in November and December. And if you're curious about uh, learning a little bit more about that content, um, that is the How I Spin content and it is part of the co-executive producer. So thank you to everybody who supports that and supports that work. It's actually one of my most favorite segments every month to create and to make. So it's an absolute pleasure. I hope everybody has a safe Halloween. Does anybody have any plans for Halloween before we say goodbye? I'm actually curious if you guys 
uh, I know Halloween in Europe isn't as big as it is over here in North America. Um, I'm not really sure why it's become so big in North America. I think Hallmark probably has a lot to do with it. And companies like Disney and whatnot who keep these cult classics going. But uh, it is something really fun this year. We're not going to be letting the kids go trick-or-treating this year. There's not really any trick-or-treating happening this year. So we're doing a cul-de-sac bonfire in the middle of the cul-de-sac. And all of our families will be spread out around. We've got uh, some goodie bags for the kids. Um, each family has one for each each child. There's eight kids in total. Two of whom, whom are teenagers. I'm not really sure why an 18-year-old gets a goodie bag. But I made him one anyways. So Because, you know, the spirit and all. I'm going to vote today, but otherwise um, hide from trick-or-treaters. That's awesome, Jean. Definitely get your vote in. We were doing a provincial election last week, and I got my vote in. So um, definitely vote. It is your opportunity to vote for something. So definitely um, for those uh, in, the, in the states right now, you guys are in the midst of a federal election. So I hope that you um, cast your vote for something that you believe in. And uh, up here we are um uh doing our we just finished our provincial election so did i oh eve <laughs> mike did so what happened yesterday uh eve and i were on zoom together hanging out for a little bit yesterday morning and i was stuffing all of the bags for the kids in the cul-de-sac and i went to get the chocolate bars that i got for the eight of them because i bought eight right for one for each kid and they weren't there the box was there but there was no candy bars inside. Like the Mars bars, the arrows, the Snickers, all gone. And I was really mad because, you know, like it's Friday before Halloween. I had organized all this stuff. I was just feeling like, really? Like, come on. So I kind of assumed that Mike and the kids had eaten them. I wasn't that far off. So I texted Mike and I was like, where are the chocolate bars? Anyways, he had taken them to work for the work Halloween party thing that they were doing yesterday afternoon. He's dressing up this year as Jack Skellington. So we'll take some photos this evening so you guys can see him and I in costume. And uh, anyways, bless his heart, he went and got more. He went and replaced them. So on his way home, he stopped in at the dollar um, at the dollar store and he got eight. And so all was well in the world, but I was pretty frustrated. So that's what ended up happening. Yeah. have children just moved in next door so drop them some sweets oh that's lovely because they can't trick-or-treat that's awesome carol small group toddler trick-or-treat in the local playground oh i'm glad you guys are gonna be able to do something kelly that's fantastic kelly is local to me she's just up in squamish we're doing a 10k virtual run later today congratulations sonia i hope it goes really super well having a couple of friends over that have become family and will watch movies and have treats that's fantastic maggie uh, creepy movies and spinning are my plans for today. Jess, I am envious. I wish I could just sit and spin all day. James, uh, there's two little two boys in his cohort um, in his classroom at school who are both only children, and they're having a little Halloween party this to, this afternoon. Just the three of them. So uh, James is going to that for a couple hours. So I'm going to go hang out with my mom for for a couple hours while I'm waiting for James to be finished, and I will bring him home. Visiting a couple of family homes outside. Thanks for the Halloween fun. I had forgotten today was Halloween until I turned, tuned into the podcast. This is the first year in decades that I have not bought candy for trick-or-treaters. You know what? It's crazy, Sherry, because uh, the stores are chocker block full here of Halloween candy, and usually it's sold out. Um, and I couldn't believe yesterday how much candy was still left uh, when I ran into the dollar store in the morning. So I didn't know that the chocolate bars were missing. Otherwise, I would have bought them at that time. But I ran in to get a couple of things. Photo shoot for senior pictures and beautiful fall weather. Oh, that's wonderful, Jackie. Um, Naomi wants to know who ate the chocolate. Uh, the, the people at work. So Mike had taken it to, to work and the, the guys at work ate it. No Halloween in Germany. Yeah, I, I know it's not necessarily something that's um, celebrated everywhere. Or not celebrate. I keep saying celebrate, but I don't mean it that way. Um, it's more just something fun to, to, to enjoy. We're going to hang out in the garage with some friends and some cocktails. Lots of trunk or treat going on around here. Oh, that's good, Diane. So people are kind of making it work. I know they're doing a big trunk or treat uh, here. So for those who don't know what trunk or treat is, it's where you uh, usually congregate in a really big uh, parking lot somewhere. A lot of churches will host it. And um, um, they'll uh, people open up the backs of their vehicles, so the trunk, and um, kids can go around and trick or treat that way. So that's wonderful. Yeah. Try and stop the dogs from eating next door's puking pumpkin. <laughs> That's awesome. 
Great place to end. Thank you so much for being here this week. Thank you for engaging in the sillies with me. I hope you have a wonderful, safe, safe Halloween. Wear your masks, and I hope that you are um, have a really wonderful uh, week as we enter November. And happy spinning, happy knitting, happy being creative. I will see you guys next time, and happy Halloween. Bye. Oh, and bye from zero. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.